What's the word, y'all? All right. Um, it is finally time for me to talk about the Lakers. I have been one of the creators on this platform that have refrained from talking about the Lakers because I was giving them the benefit of the doubt, right? They have four and probably should have had five all NBA 75 players on the team. Now, again, some of those players are, are well past their prime, but they should have been able to put it together. And I was giving them that benefit of the doubt. And right now, it might not even be the right time to make this video because Anthony Davis is out for a couple weeks or whatever it is with that injury. But there are some some glaring red flags that I've been seeing throughout the course of the season that that even though Anthony Davis is out, we got to address them. I mean, I think right now they're in a three to four game loser streak. They just lost to Katie Bates D up in the Spurs. Shout out to them. We'll talk about them. And things are just not not good for this Lakers team that many people thought was going to just run over the Western Conference and right now they are sub 500. Now remember, I am just a dude with a microphone and watch some basketball. My opinion literally means nothing. You might disagree and that's completely okay. It is just basketball at the end of the day. But leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Before we even talk about the Lakers, I just want to mention that the last two weeks of the NBA season have been terrible. I mean, not terrible relative to what we're used to because basketball is basketball and I enjoy basketball as you should too but like one of the major criticisms about the NBA as a whole is the, the fact that there are so many games that once we get to this point in the season we're a couple months in there are little to no stakes to these regular season games like I know people that don't watch regular season basketball until we get to the last couple weeks because that's when it matters you start jostling for playoff season this and that and now we're already at a point where the stakes are low and now we got health and safety protocol we got normal injuries that are having teams that are completely decimated that I'm watching a team play and some of these players I've never seen play basketball before how can I look at this game this team win by 20 and have any real takeaways it's hard because again this is my job to talk about these games you know what I'm saying and you know what it's it's not void of his great things right Joe Johnson at the age of 40 back in the NBA he had a bucket I said Thomas, a guy that we thought might have been done, got a 10-day. And let's be honest, he probably not getting 10-day number two after what we see. I'm sorry, I'd say we love you around here. DeMarcus Cousins, we ain't heard from him in a minute. He got a call, and he had 20-piece 20 uh, today. Who else? Lance Stevenson back in the NBA. And then another silver line is, like, we got players that have been G League players for seasons at a time. And now they're getting an opportunity to on the main stage to have a stay in the NBA. I even felt bad, right? The, one of the first teams to really get really decimated by health and safety protocol was the Orlando Magic. And I made a little jokey joke tweet about a dude that I didn't even know he, who existed. But he was in the G League. He was getting buckets and everything. And I made a little jokey joke tweet. And then I had to sit back and realize there's a dude that is real life living out his dreams of having a chance at the NBA. So I felt bad for a moment. I hope you realize that everything is just jokes. I, I'm, I'm rooting for you, my guy. But it's 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 hard to, you know, there's just not a lot of stakes right now. You know, I watched the Atlanta Hawks win against Joel Embiid and the 76ers, and that's a great team win for them. But I can't really look at this and, and like, try to have big-time takeaways. That's all. That's all I'm really saying. And for a job for like this, where I'm talking about basketball for a living, the last two weeks have been, uh, let's talk about the Lakers, all right? They lost to Katie Bates Diop and the Spurs. And I mentioned in the last recap ramble video that I was going to go out on the limb and, and try to watch as many Spurs games as I can because they have been one of the teams that have a lot of young talent that I haven't really tuned into a ton. Um, and even though DeJounte Murray did not have a good shooting night, it was 3 for 16. He was a, a wizard with the ball because how often do you see a person have 13 assists and, and zero turnovers? That is something that doesn't happen in the NBA. Our best playmakers in the entire league occasionally make the, the airy pass or just makes a pass that gets intercepted not for DeJounte Murray that's a big time game K to base Diop is a guy that came into today's game averaging 3.8 points per game he had 30 points and he shot perfect from the field the first Spurs player to ever score 30 plus and shoot perfect from the field which is an amazing statistic but one that I didn't I, I would have thought that Tim Duncan might have done at least one time in 20 years or the Admiral would have done it. Because these are guys that are close to the basket for the most part. Katie Bates Diop did that. Um, I, I'm in love with the way the confidence that Keldon Johnson has had, at least recently, with shooting the ball. He didn't shoot it officially today. He was only two for seven from three. But it's a guy that they were basically begging to take more threes. Derek White has always been a super underrated player. I, and Lonnie Walker threw the behind the back pass to L Liddell. Shout out to him, man. Spurs, I'm still watching you before I even deep dive into y'all. But let's talk about the Lakers because this is a team that I have not watched or not missed many games of this year. Because one thing you can agree with, whether you're Lakers fan or not it is must see TV right it is either really going to be really really good or really really bad the, the real epitome and I don't even know if that's the right word of this season for the Lakers is that one play where in the fourth quarter seven minutes left in it and yeah the game might be over but it's not like a 50 point game right now you know what I'm saying you put together a couple runs you right back in it where LeBron James is the only person back on offense and he just say F it and he shoots a three 
Nobody got back on offense. There are some very glaring issues with this team, and it is crazy that this is a team that you know, I was slightly wrong about. If you remember the video, the name of the video, I'm looking at it right here. Russell Westbrook was traded to the Lakers, and it's fine. That was my that was my video because I, I saw I was kind of in the middle, right? I saw people on one side like, yeah, this is the biggest trade of all time. This is so great for the Lakers. And I saw people completely bashing the trade. And in the moment, I was like, it's it's fine, right? And my main argument was like, Russell Westbrook is good enough to win you games by himself. And Russell Westbrook has had a good season. Do not get me wrong. He started off slow and he ramped it up and ramped it up. Even today, he had a very efficient um, however many points, 12 for 20 from the field. But in my mind, when they trade for Russell Westbrook, one of the reasons you trade for him is because he is a one-man win occasionally. And what I have not seen this season is Russell Westbrook be able to do that. And that's not discredited Russ. That's just seeing that the rest of this roster is so ass- that LeBron having one of the greatest stretches we've seen from him in like three years, and even Russell Westbrook having a really good game was not enough to beat up on the Spurs who have been up and down this season. The rest of this roster is bad. And like I even I made a tweet it was like, Le give LeBron some help. And a lot of people replying, like, LeBron is the reason he's in this, this mess. Because, yeah, Le though LeBron is not the one actually making the calls and negotiating, you can't tell me that Rob Pelik has done any trade in the history of, of LeBron being on this team where, where LeBron didn't have at least some type of say. So them trading the depth or them trading whatever for Russell Westbrook, yes, he greenlit that trade. He did. And and you you have players like DeAndre a uh, DeAndre um, Jordan. DeAndre Aiden, I almost said DeAndre Hunter. It's, why is there so many DeAndres in the league right now? Uh, he only plays six minutes a day, and I'm happy they kind of getting him back out of the rotation. But he's got a million chances in the rotation this season, dog. You know what I'm saying? There's a dude that started off as like the center that was starting, and then he was out of the rotation. He was back to the starter, and I guess he's phasing out. But at this point of his career... I do not think that DeAndre Jordan is a guy that is a, a, a playable NBA player. He is not good on defense. A guy that was all defensive teams in his past or even all NBA teams in his past, he is, pro he is well past that. That boy don't defend for nothing. A guy that was known as a, a vertical threat on the offense and defensive side of the ball, he just don't provide that anymore. You know, and, and the guys that you rely on to be shooters – have not been as good of the shooters as you want. Now, again, they're still missing like Malik Monk, who helps the spacing on this team dramatically. Even if he's not having a great game, you have to respect Malik Monk. But like Wayne Ellinson, one for seven for three. I know he had the one against the Mavericks a couple, uh, I guess like a week or so ago that sent them to overtime or whatever. But he hasn't been as good. And listen, I am still team uh, Horton Tucker. Now, I'm not a guy that's going to tell you that he's about to be a multiple-time All-Star because I know there are people on that side of the spectrum. But I think that a lot of people have turned an eye to uh, uh, Horton Tucker. And it's not – I mean, some of it is fault of his own from him not playing well. But I think that other people hyped him up so much that the expectations from a normal NBA fan are extreme from, from Horton Tucker when in reality he should just be a role player. You know what I'm saying? He's getting paid as a role player. He should just be a role player. He shouldn't be a guy that's expected to blossom into the superstar player at the age of, what, 22 or whatever. But he's also not a complete scrub that some people may have been seeing over the last couple games because the, uh, the, the game the other night was as, as bad as it gets. But, you, man, I just – at one point in this game, it's, it's so unfortunate to say because, again, I am big on Isaiah Thomas. I just like the idea of him getting a second chance, but – the Spurs saw him on the defensive side of the ball, and they were licking their lips. They were running every screen possible to get Isaiah Thomas on the ball handler, and it didn't matter how good of positioning Isaiah Thomas could have had or whatever. He's just too small. There was one play, and this was the second quarter, if I'm not mistaken, um, where Isaiah Thomas got switched onto a bigger defender. It might have been Kata Bates Diop. And Isaiah Thomas is calling for LeBron to switch. And LeBron's like, bet, I'll switch. I'll get Kata Bates Diop. And LeBron is pointing. Go get Derek White. Go get Derek White. Isaiah Thomas never made the rotation. And if, for a guy of his size that is already deficient on the defensive side of the ball, he can't have the mental things too. So it's unfortunate. Again, as a guy that wants to see Isaiah Thomas have a successful second half of his NBA career or second chance of these, his NBA career, whatever. There, this is not a team. The Lakers, if they're a team that is built to win right now, keep that in mind. Every trade, everything that they have done over the past couple of seasons can stay into contention. They just won a championship two seasons ago. They are trying to continue on that path. This is not supposed to be a team that needs LeBron to drop 36 for them to even have a chance. He's about to be 37 in a couple days, y'all. 
This team should have been built, and I think they thought that they built the team where LeBron can coast. Before the season started, they were t telling AD, hey, bro, this is your team, man. And, and I love me some Anthony Davis, man. Chicago kid, got it, he got a tatted on his forearm. I don't care what the counter stats tell you, bro. Anthony Davis is not playing like a guy that should be in all NBA conversations, and that is the Anthony Davis that you need for this team to be a championship team. This is not a team that's trying to make the playoffs. This is a team that has championship aspirations. And, I, and people keep saying, like, hey, let GM go come here and trade all of these boys. <laughs> Which, yeah, on paper you would think that. But what here do you see is valuable enough for LeGM to make any trades to make him have a championship quality team this year? What do you see? Horn Tucker is, is a valuable asset, I still believe. He's 22 years old on a decent deal, and you throw him to the right team, he might be able to blossom into a, a quality, quality starter or maybe more than that. That's the only thing that I look at this team has, that has any value to another organization where you can get something back that is positive for your team. The only thing I can see could potentially happen is you shuffling the deck to get pieces that fit better with Braun or pieces that fit better with the way Russell Westbrook plays. But other than that, this is this roster right now does not get that much better. The getting better is Anthony Davis playing better. The getting better is the big three gelling together. And I just don't see... Right now, on December 24th... Merry Christmas Eve, by the way. December 24th... That this team is messing with the Suns. That this team is messing with the Warriors. And this team is messing with the Jazz on their best day. It's tough. To, it's tough right now. I trust LeBron. I trust LeBron. I trust Russell Westbrook to some extent. It's hard. I, I can't really say that for a playoff series just yet. I need to see more. But right now, those are the two players I'm trusting in the regular season. Everything else is a question mark. And that's not what you want. But even with all that being said... Other than the top three teams that I just mentioned, they're fine. You know what I'm saying? If they were going in a playoff series against the Grizzlies, I might take Lakers, which is weird to say. And and maybe that's naive of me to say because, well, the Grizzlies have been better this season. But it's LeBron, right? Silver lining. Western Conference sucks right now. Them being below 500, or they just hit 500. They might be below 500. I don't know. I don't know if these standards have been updated. That still has them as like the sixth seed right now. For the first time in what seems like a decade, the Western Conference is not very good. It's top heavy for sure. Um, they are the sixth seed below 500. It's the sixth seed. They're not even in a play in. They below 500 right now. That's the silver lining of it all. Um, four game losing streak. Sixth seed. Um, there are some other games that went on today. I just, I, I don't know. Let's briefly talk about them. Let me know what you think about the Lakers. Am I overreacting? I, I mean, I think I'm. everything I've said is pretty level-headed, but maybe you disagree. Um, let's talk about the Pacers winning against the Rockets. It was cool to see Jalen Green back on the court. I would love to see Miles Turner's shot chart when Sabonis is playing versus when Sabonis isn't playing. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first game Sabonis missed all season. So not that big of a sample size this year. But when I watched Miles Turner play today, he was inside outside, but more inside than outside. He don't really he doesn't get the opportunity to do that when Sabonis plays. Um next, Brandon Ingram is still the bucket. Cool. Joel and B missed the bunny. I don't expect him to miss many of those again, but he I think that the the Hawks did a good job defending Joel and B um for the most part. And Bogey hits a big time shots down the stretch. The Miami Heat are 12 and 13. Low key. 12, I'm sorry, 20 and 13. Without Bam, without Jimmy, without there was a picture of the Miami Heat bench, and it was like five players that should be starters. We had Kimba drop 40, Boogie drop 20, Yadonis Haslam play quality minutes. It's like we're back in 2014 or 2013 or something. Udonis Haslam played quality minutes today. And, yes, it was the Pistons who have five wins on the season. How the hell did the Pistons only have five wins? Um, but they're still winning games. Matt Struess, a, a guy that the Bulls let go, which is unfortunate. We could use a guy that shoots the hell out of the ball. And, like, Tyler Hero both hit huge shots down the stretch. And I just realized Duncan Robinson did not have a field goal today. Didn't matter. Gabe Vincent has been a huge, huge player for them in the stretch. And they've been able to weather the storm without their two All-NBA-type players, All-Star players being in there. It's amazing. Um, the Wizards won a game where, where Kemba dropped 40. And there was a statistic I saw that I think it was like Kemba's teams are like 4-16 and 16 or something crazy like that when he drops 40-plus. So basically, if, if you want to win a game um, 
stop. I mean, make sure Kemba doesn't drop 40 for your favorite team. Yeah, he needs 39 or less to win. Um, but it was just cool to see, man. The, the ultimate professional, and people were bringing back those old clips. So, like, two, three weeks ago when he was pulled out of the rotation where he said, I could be real mad, but I'm not. I got young people here that are looking up to me. And here he is getting put back in the rotation because uh, Derrick Rose is out for six weeks or whatever it may be and health and safety protocol. He has to play. And not only did he play, Dog played like every damn minute of the game. He ended up playing 30, uh, 43 minutes. That's a Tom Thibodeau special. But what happened in that fourth quarter, what happened in that fourth quarter? The Denny Abdiya Chamber. I, so can we get a nice name for Denny Abdiya as a defensive player? Now, Denny Abdiya had a lot of an assignment in the first half. Not a lot. He had a, a decent amount of assignment in the first half. But once we got to the fourth quarter, um, a coach was like, hey, just stick to him like glue. I don't care what type of screens they running. I don't care how far he is. Don't deny, deny, deny. And they denied, and that meant, meant that Julius Randle was going to get those shots. And if I'm the Wizards, good. Take the shots. Take every shot you need, Julius. And he did. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie had his first 20-point game in a very, very long time. It seems like he doesn't even look at the basket unless Bradley Beal is not there. And Bradley Beal wasn't there. Denny Abdiya, a Kenny for an all-star. Kenny for an all-star. Our next game, um, the Bucks won. Drew Holiday continues to look re really, really good after starting off very, very slow. 24-7-7. I did not watch this game, though. I can't even lie to you. I saw Boogie had a dub. I do want to go see how Boogie got a dub. Um, the, the Nuggets completely fell apart in the fourth quarter. This is a game that I turned off. I turned this game off because I was like, oh, okay, the other games are starting. The Nuggets are up. And, and like, Jokic had almost 20 rebounds in the first half and whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, we good. I say we, they're good, and they were not good. Oh, my God, they were not good at all. Um, Jalen McDaniels had a couple really good defensive possessions down the stretch. P.J. Washington had played good defense on Jokic down the stretch, and they had some big-time shots for Miles Bridges, who wasn't even having a good game, hit one of the biggest shots. And I love, oh, and Ish Smith, by the way, hit a shot in the corner. I love, again, that James Rago is not afraid to let the high hands ride. LaMelo Ball was on the bench cheering for his team. When, when you know what I'm saying, he's like the best player on the team. But Ish Smith was performing better in that moment of time. He was there for the run. So they let the guys that were in the run stay in the game. Um, the Suns had a game where they beat the, the, the Thunder. Devin Booker versus Shea Alexander was dope. But the real story is Cam Johnson. Shout out to him. He is still older than Devin Booker. And sometimes you can tell. He looks like an extreme veteran out there. Um, uh, next game. A game that I did not watch, but I saw Rudy Gobert hit a big one. And somebody said, Kenny, talk about Rudy Gobert. And I did. I want to make a video talking exclusively about the Jazz and, and how they turned their, se turned their season around. They were already good. But we had mentioned maybe a month or so ago that they had the number one offense in the league and their shots weren't even, three-point shots weren't going in. They're now going in. They're, they are now going in. So the, now the team that was already the greatest offensive team in the league is hitting more shots. So that's something. Steph Curry had a 46-piece, and it was great. But I don't even want to talk about him. We had two Kenny Real All-Stars going head-to-head -head in this one. It was the Anthony Melton, who had a very good game. And the second was Gary Payton, the second. And you know what? Two Kenny Real All-Stars? I didn't care what Steph Curry was doing, even though it was amazing. It was, it was really amazing. DeAnthony Melton, winning player. They did not win this game, but winning plays. And then for Gary Payton II to hit four threes, I mean, if I'm if I'm the Grizzlies, I'm not upset with Gary Payton hitting four threes because you're not expecting him to do that. I'm upset with we let Steph Curry get so many open ones. There were many plays in this game. I'm like, how the hell did Steph Curry get that wide open? Some of them he missed, but majority of them, majority of them he hit. Um, and, and then we already talked about the Lakers. Nice. That is a recap, a one take recap. It's great. It feels good to do that because that means I don't have to edit and I can finally get to bed because it is well past my bedtime. Um, I hope that everybody here has a happy, happy holidays, man. I really appreciate all the love that we've got throughout the course of, of 2021. And I'm not, I'm saying this like, this is the last video of the year. It's not the last video of the year, but I just want to show my appreciation because, um, this is a channel that was not getting a ton of love from me. Um, I was so heavily focused on my main channel, which makes sense, right? The main channel is the one that pays my bills. Um, but this season, this this year, I told myself the 2021-2022 season, I was going to focus heavily on this channel. And I have. I've uploaded more videos over here than I did in the previous years combined, which is great. And y'all continue to show, show support. And I really appreciate that. My future daughter really, really appreciates that because... Uh, her nursery is pretty much done and that's off Kenny for real videos so thank you guys uh 
and I don't plan to stop anytime soon. If anything, we're, we're raising up the bar um, a little bit more for 2022 as we continue to try to hit the half a million subscriber mark here. And eventually the ultimate goal is get to that million mark, which don't mean a damn thing, but it's just a nice number to get a plaque and everything. So thank you so much for your, your um, support, whether it be here or just any of the channels. I am highly appreciative of everything that y'all have um, have done. You changed my life and I appreciate y'all.